Alan Hitchin here. Welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Maker. Today, on the agenda, I'm going to dissect my levels in Super Mario Maker. So, let's jump into it. First and foremost, though, I want to give everybody a little tip. I have notifications. Cool. Someone played Know Your Skills. Okay, we'll get to that. Let me go to Makers real quick so I can go to the people that I follow. I want to give everybody a little tip about uh, stars and medals and stuff. Once you amass a certain amount of stars, you get a medal. Once you get a medal, you can upload 10 more levels. I don't know what the cap is. I know people like uh, Ross here. They have all the medals that you can get and all the uploads that you can get. So what I like to do is every day... Uh, star my friend stages so they can get more uploads and get more medals and more stars. I said that in reverse of how you get them. You get stars, then you get medals, and then you, uh, when you get medals, you get uploads. So, for example, let me go into Odin's backstage real quick. Down here, there's clearly some gold stars. That means I've starred it recently. I don't know if the most recent update to this game made it to where I can star things every day, but for the past three days, I've been able to restar stages Every day, it reset, and I could restar them and help people get stars. So you just go into their stage real quick, and uh, since you've already beaten it, you don't want to—you don't have to beat their level again. And you just want to give them a star real quick. You just boot up the stage, hit the star, exit the course, and you just go through all their stages and star them and help your friends get stars, which helps them get medals. Medals gives them uploads, so if you want your friends to be able to upload more levels, go through every day and star their stages. And, uh, if you could star my stages, I'd appreciate it. You don't have to, and it's no big deal if you don't, but if you want me to be able to upload more levels, you need stars, which give you medals, which give you uploads. So, now that that's out of the way, now we're going to dissect my levels. So, the next couple of uploads that I'm going to do of Super Mario Maker are going to be dedicated to me dissecting my levels. I'll probably do the the first four here and then do the last five in another one tomorrow. So I'm going to click on my first level down here. Show you a code so you can type this code in and then follow me, play all my stages before you watch this video and get completely spoiled on what I'm about to do because I'm about to dissect my levels and uh, go into what I was thinking when I created these stages. So you've had enough time to type in this code. So now I'm going to play the clear rate down here, 114 clears. I forgot, I didn't see the other thing. 600 lives lost in this stage. The clear rate's 19%. Let's play the stage. So, assuming you're still watching and not playing now, a lot of things in this stage are bad. The first thing that I'm going to point out, that this is the, uh, when you first start playing Mario Maker, it makes you edit 1-1. It's like, complete 1-1. This is that for me. It's me completing 1-1. So, these first couple blocks are bad. This up top, also bad. The only thing good right here is that. It's a gold Mario Amiibo costume. There we have a block, I mean a pipe that shoots out para, uh, para Goombas. There's a para piranha plant in that thing. A para Venus fire trap here. And if we go up top, if you want to explore, there's three Goombas and boxes of nothing but bad things. Para Venus fire traps. That's the only other good thing, and it's just another gold Mario costume. So if you get a run and go and you just jump across this pit, you'll make it safe. And sound, no problem. The Venus fire trap's gone for some reason. Now, there's two ways to beat this level. You can go the up way or the down way. The down way is full of Koopa bounces, which is one of my favorite mechanics from the lost levels that was added. If you keep your momentum and don't lose it, you can jump across these pipes before the Venus fire traps pop up. So you don't even have to worry about that if you're fast enough. And then you just jump across. That's that stage in a nutshell. Two ways to beat that stage, up or down, doesn't matter. It's not that hard, but I also created it, so 
that's why I don't think it's hard. So let's jump into Alan Edgehead's castle. I forgot to check the clear rate and stuff. We'll check it after I beat it. So your first instinct is run to the right. You don't want to do that in this stage because I put some some little a little spiky spike there, but it's basically a castle version of the the first stage. Everything in the stage is bad. Just about. Except I did change up the some things. This is still a jumping piranha plant, and there's still Koopa bounces down there. And this is still a Venus fire trap, but the Paragoombas are now paraspines, which shoot spines in all sorts of directions. And you gotta get a run and go here and land. So let me hit this second block. It's a blooper nanny, and I lost my power up. And I can't find the blooper to kill it. But every other block up here is a blooper nanny, so I'm not gonna hit it. Well, yes, I am, apparently. Where did that big blooper nanny come from? What? I don't remember putting a big blooper nanny in this stage. What? Excuse me? Let me get a power up real quick. And then immediately lose it. Oh, oh, oh. Are those bloopers gone? Well, there goes that. Is that a blooper nanny? Nope. This is just some rare amiibos up here. Uh. Amiibo, amiibo. Captain Falcon, Fox. Blooper Nanny. This one is Mega Man, and I think that last one was Samus. I'm gonna get killed now. And I have to get killed to show off my secret here, so. I died on purpose. Just so you know. Let's jump across here. Sledge Row there. Go up top again. Paraspines. Basically just my first level, but in castle form. I did change this up and make it like a tighter, narrower space to get in. I want to be Samus. Now, as soon as that gets on the screen, it's going to, like, its timer starts. Here's the secret. It's a Lackey 2 cloud that you can just use to fly across the stage, should you choose to. Little one-up trick there. I messed it up. Flubbed it up. Pixel perfect jump here. You don't want to get killed on those spikes. You can jump on Bowser Jr.'s head there. That, that's basically my castle, in a nutshell. Basically just my first stage, but with an amiibo collection at the top, and slightly tighter jumps, and an axe instead of a flagpole. So there you can get a good look at the overworld there. The overview, not overworld. The clear rate is lower than the first stage. So it's a 5.29% clear rate, 47 clears out of 887 lives used. So that's the thing we can get a look at here. See, it's basically my first level, but it's a castle version with some tighter jumps. So here we have, that's two levels, here is uh, the third level. It's called Koopa Castle. The clear rate is 5.62%, 45 clears out of 800 lives used. I'm pretty. This is where I start getting proud of my levels. I'm, I, I like this one quite a bit. So, right off the bat, there's not spikes surrounding you just to the left, but I put that there to, like, kind of give you a hazard when you're exploring over here because... This is the first level that I incorporated three one-ups. The, the three one-ups basically symbolize the star coins of uh, the later games in the Mario series. So, I first got that idea from Punkle, who, who puts winged one-ups in his stages to symbolize uh, star coins. But a lot of people put the three one-ups in there because it's not a very uncommon idea to have. But if you explore over here, there's a, there's a ding-donger over here. I said donger. So when it ding-dongs, you think, oh, there must be something over here. There's a hidden block. So that's that's the, the tip of this level. When you, when you see the ding-dong, there's a hidden block. So here's the first one up. We fall down. Ding-dong. Over here, we jump down here. Ding-dong, hidden block, and a power-up. 
So let me jump up here, because there's obviously going to be another ding-dong in the middle of these fire- I died. In my own stage. That is embarrassing. Okay, let me get the power up. I'm not going to get that one up up there again. I showed you where it was to begin with. Here's a ding-dong here. It's the second one up, which basically, it's really close to the first one, but whatever. Game design. Some your typical Doom Ship stuff up here. I don't know why I put Doom Ship stuff in a castle stage, but whatever I did. Here you need to bounce off the dry bones. Now, if you want to avoid what I put in this stage, and you want to go up and over instead of down where that mushroom block is, mushroom platform, just jump on the Koopa Paratroopa and bounce up top here. There's a power up. Normally, how I wanted you to do this was I incorporated some troll blocks, and I didn't do it for the sake of trolling because uh, troll blocks are some things that I don't necessarily like all the time. But I did it so you wouldn't go up. I did it so you'd hit it and you'd fall down here and land. Yes, if you hit it wrong, it'll like you'll fall into the lava. But if you jump just right, you'll hit the troll blocks and fall down and land on this. Just so you'd have some more obstacles you'd have to jump through. And then you'd go back and get the mushroom here. But you can avoid all that by jumping on the Koopa Paratroopas. Now here's some jump that you need to make. I put spikes there. Just I don't know if you... If you end up landing on the spikes, I guess if you had a power-up, you could jump up and um, save yourself. But here's another power-up. I wanted that Koopa Clown car to float, but it can't float in midair. There has to be something for it to bounce on, or else it would just fall to the, the lava. Boss fight. There's a giant Bowser Jr. You don't even have to fight it. Bye. Audi. There's a door. Watch out. Be careful, because there's a thwomp. So here, here's like a pit that you can fall into. A normal jump, you, well, a normal jump won't get you out of it. You gotta get a little bit of a run and go. That's some things that I don't like in stages when you fall into a pit and you can't get out. Every stage should be reversible and like beatable. You shouldn't fall into a pit and then have to hit the button and start over. You should be able to beat stages. That's one thing that I don't like in some stages that people make is not being able to beat a stage. If you fall into it, you're screwed. But up here are some coin blocks. And there's a Kribo shoe. So you need this to actually beat the level. Oh, that's the way I intended you to beat the level. You don't necessarily need it. And down here in this pit is the third and final star coin, air quote. Here's a sledge bro. Let's kill it. Now this is why you need the Kribo shoe. You need it to be able to jump up the spikes. You don't necessarily need it because if you have a power up, you can just uh, take a hit and jump up it quick enough. And there's the last mechanic of the stage. I took uh, the inspiration from the final fight with Bowser in Mario 3 and put some bricks over the axe. So you have to get Bowser to break a brick to be able to beat him to touch the axe. Because you got to touch the axe to beat the level. So, you get him to jump. He frees part of the axe. You touch the axe. You beat the stage. So... That's it for Koopa Castle. And we'll, we'll, we'll leave the, the code on the screen right there for now because that'll do it for this edition of Mario Maker dissecting the Allen Edgehead stages. I will be back in a part two of this level dissection. We'll dissect the rest of them. So I'll see you guys next time.